Six lines of code is what it takes to write your first machine learning example. I am Arun Panepan. I will walk you through how we do that. Before we get started, what is the latest and greatest in machine learning? Today we have built systems that are able to beat human beings in the game of AlphaGo and play guitar games. We are moving towards building general intelligence. All this while we were building specific systems to solve specific problems. We were all comfortable losing to computers in the game of chess for many, many years. That system was called as Deep Blue. Today, we will look at a much more simpler example while this is the state of the art. We will try to differentiate between apples and oranges. In order to tell apart the difference between an apple and orange, if you were asked to write some software code, the way you would probably go about doing it is you will look at the number of pixels that are red in color, number of pixels that are orange in color, yellow in color, so on and so forth. And you will come out and say something is an apple or an orange. But these kind of rules are bound to fail. If I give you a grayscale image or a black and white image, these rules will fail. Now you'll go back and add many more rules. Just to tell apart the differences between an apple and an orange, you're gonna go on adding more and more and more rules. While you could do that, that's not a scalable or a sustainable thing. How about we let the computers automatically discover the rules based on data that we provide to them. When we do that, that turns out to be machine learning. What are the different types of machine learning? We have supervised and unsupervised learning. If I go to an orchard, I buy some fruits, I come back, look at measurements like the weight, or the texture and I also label them and say this fruit is an apple, this fruit is an orange. Provide that to an algorithm, ask the algorithm to learn based on that so that it can classify new fruits given to it. Then it turns out to be supervised algorithm because I not only provide the input data, I also provide it labels. So that is supervised learning. On the contrary, if I go to an orchard, I buy some fruits, but I do not label it. I ask the computer to go explore on its own and come back and tell me what are the different types of fruits that exist in this bag of fruits that I have. Then it turns out to be unsupervised learning because I'm not providing any guidance or inputs to the computer in order for it to learn from it. Right? So that is unsupervised learning. We will look at a very, very simple use case of supervised learning in this case. What we are going to do, we went to the orchard, we bought some fruits, we have looked at measurements like weight and texture. These are called as features. We will use these features and we will also use the target labels that are provided to us, which are like uh, you know, uh, whether it is an apple or an orange or things like that. We will use this in information to learn the rules, right? For now, we are going to use a classifier called as the decision tree classifier. You could think of a decision tree classifier as just a box of rules, right? After we complete this exercise, the decision tree classifier is likely to come out with something like this, where it is checking on the weight and based on the weight, it makes certain decisions. Then it checks on the texture and based on that, it makes certain decisions. What happens under the hood before it comes up with these questions and the necessary answers will all be dealt with when we talk about our, when we go into the details in our course. As of now, we will just assume that the decision tree classifier is nothing but a way to learn a box of rules. Now, in order for us to get this all to work, right, we will need some machine learning libraries. For this video, I will assume that you are familiar with Python and the machine learning libraries. But during the course, I will walk you through what Python is, how to work with Python, and I will also talk to you about each one of the machine learning libraries and go to details about them, right? So now let's go ahead and look at the example so that we can learn from it, right? So when you look at the example, um, right, what we are going to use is 
called SkyKitLearn. SkyKitLearn and TensorFlow, these are kind of the uh, motherhood uh, uh, libraries that you would have in, um, in machine learning, right? Whenever you talk about machine learning with Python, you're always talking about any of these libraries. And SkyKitLearn essentially gives you all the models implemented in one place under one roof. So we will use that. Now, uh, when you talk about all the features, we collected features which was like the weight and the texture. What I'm actually going to do here is 150 grams is the weight and the texture is going to be bumpy. When it is bumpy, I'm going to mark it as one. When it is going to be smooth, I'm going to mark it as zero, right? So this combination represents the inputs for one fruit, 150 grams and bumpy. What, what type of fruit is it? It is an orange. Orange is represented as zero and apples are represented as one. All of our machine learning models will take inputs as numbers. So we will have a numeric representation for every text that is available to us as input or as label. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to go to SkyKitLearn. We are going to get the decision tree classifier from SkyKitLearn. We are going to, uh, going to then pass the features and labels as input to our decision tree classifier. Once we provide the features and labels as input, now we are going to pass a new fruit whose weight is like 200 grams and is bumpy. Now we are going to ask the classifier to go ahead and predict it for us, right? So let's see how this guy is actually able to cope up with this challenge, right? So when I go ahead and ask him to do a prediction, right? So, so I'm going to go ahead and run this code for ourselves for, for you to make sure that you have the necessary environment, what you can do is you could go ahead and type out something like this, right? Python hyphen hyphen version, which will actually have to say that it is part of Anaconda and you have a version of Python that actually runs as part of that. The libraries like SkyKitLearn, NumPy and all those libraries that we were talking about, which are scientific libraries, are all going to be part of uh, Anaconda distribution that is available out there. Now let's go ahead and run this code and see for ourselves, right, what uh, uh, what we are, uh, what, what we intended to see, right? Anything that, uh, you know, the input that we had was like 150 grams, 200 grams, I think, right? It was 200 grams and was bumpy. So that should typically be a orange. Let's see what this guy comes back and says. He also thinks it is an orange. We encoded all the oranges as zero and all our apples as one. One. So that's kind of what he's trying to get, get us to see. So what we were able to do just now was we looked at a very simple example with just about five, six lines of code. We are now in a position to create our first machine learning model and put it to test. You can certainly go about trying to change the data that is out here, right? For example, if I go ahead and, uh, and make the fruit to be smooth, let us see what happens, right? You can go ahead and change the data that is out here like this, right? You can go ahead and make it smooth and actually go ahead and run the same code and see what, what it tells. Now you see it, it has turned, turned its prediction to be an apple because it is recognizing it, right? All, and additionally, what I would also ask you to do is look at some of the data sets that is available in your environment. Try to fit into this, right? Fit into, uh, into this kind of a model. Identify the features, identify the labels. Try to play around with this code. That will give you a little bit more of a practice on how to play with these decision tree like models, right? Uh, during our course, we will walk into the details of how the decision tree by itself actually works. Right. And uh, the course will not only cover statistical machine learning, we will also talk about neural networks and deep learning to detail. We'll look at both the supervised cases and unsupervised cases there. Right. If you had any questions, do drop me an email. Right. My email, uh, I can be accessed at arun at techcovery.in. A-R-U-N at T-E-C-H-C-O v e r y dot n is where you can reach out to me right you, uh, thanks everybody thanks for listening to me